This is video four in our series, Analytical Mechanics. Um, reminder, the playlist for all the videos is featured at the website, digital-university.org. What we want to do in this video is just give a real simple introduction to the Lagrangian and then just a, uh, a basic demonstration as to how to use it. Now, what we did in, I think it was in the second video, we had considered an integral of this general form and then when we said that we wanted to find the stationary function for this integral that there was a corresponding differential equation that we derived and that was this and this is the, uh, the other equation. Now what we're going to do in this video is exactly the same thing really except the functions that we're going to be working with are Lagrangian functions and the Lagrangian is just simply the difference between it's the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So this would be the potential energy of a particle, the kinetic energy of a particle or a system minus its um, potential energy. And what is interesting about this function is that for the motion of a particle or the motion of a um, a system of particles is that if we take an integral like this of the Lagrangian over a period of time the Lagrangian of the system is a stationary integral so from this we're going to get a corresponding Euler or Lagrangian differential equation and that differential equation is what will um, govern the uh, the motion of the system or the motion of the particle and for a lot of systems using this approach is uh, simpler actually than just applying um, Newtonian mechanics. Um, in these videos now, again, capital T will represent the kinetic energy. Capital V will be the potential energy. The uh, kinds of systems we're working with will have like um, blocks or maybe molecules that are moving, but their, their mass will always be uh, constant. And the forces that are involved will be conservative forces. So that means, of course, that if we have a force, say, and this force has an X component and a Y and a Z component then the X component of that force that would be minus the partial or the potential energy of the system with respect to X and Fy would be the same thing except it would be the negative partial derivative the potential energy with respect to y and f of z of course would be the same thing it would be this partial derivative of course this is true for all conservative forces and these are the types of forces that we're going to consider um, both in this video and all the other subsequent videos unless we designate otherwise so let's just give a simple demonstration of the Lagrangian. Um, let's say that we're at a certain point on Earth. It has an X um, component in a, or it has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate and the Z axis is the, diff is the uh, height above the planet and if we have a projectile then going across the surface of the planet like that then its kinetic energy T that would be one half m v squared now we can have components to this velocity of vx, a vy and a vz um, components to it so this could equal one half m and v of x that would be x dot squared 
of y would be y dot squared. V of z would be z dot squared. Of course, x dot is dx dt. This is dy dt. This is dz dt. And the potential energy, V, that's just mg, times the height above the earth. Many times you see h is used for that, but we're using z. So it's mg z. So the Lagrangian is kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So it looks like this. And then what we're saying is that if we take the integral of the Lagrangian, say from T1 to T2, putting the Lagrangian inside of here automatically makes that a stationary integral. So we'd have it like this. And actually, we're not going to write Lagrangian in here. This is what L is, of course. But let's write it like this. A Lagrangian like this. And what variables do we have for the Lagrangian? Well, there's Z. There's X dot. So it's a function of X dot. And Y dot. And Z dot. So our integral has this general form. And hopefully you've watched um, video number three where we considered um, the other equation in um, general expressions of it. And we're going to apply that knowledge um, right now in this video because we're looking at this and we're saying, well, if the integral is of this general form, what other equations, or since these are the Grungian functions now, what Lagrangian equations would come out of it. Well, t, which is time, of course, is the independent variable here. So first we're going to have d, dt, of the partial of L. And we see it has z, the variable z, the dependent variable z, and z prime. So remember how we did it before. It would be the partial of L, d dt, the partial of L with respect to z dot, of course that's just dz dt, minus the partial of L with respect to z equals zero. So that's one equation that would be would fall out from this. Then we have these other variables here. So let's consider those. Again, it's always going to be d dt, because time t is the independent variable. And we have x dot, so we have the partial of L with respect to x dot. Then we would have minus the partial of L with respect to x, but there is no x variable here. So it's just a truncated equation. It's this. And then we would also have d dt. Again, time was the independent variable. A partial of L with respect to y dot. And there is no y variable over here, so this equals zero. So from the general form of uh, the Grungian function, we get one, two, three Euler Lagrange equations. Now here 
good. It's still in focus. This is L. We want to take, let's do this one, the partial of L with respect to Y dot. So we go up to here. The partial of L with respect to Y dot, the 2 comes down, cancels that, so we'll have M Y dot. Partial of L with respect to y dot is m y dot and then we could say yes the 2 comes down to take the derivative of what's inside but that would just be dy dot dy dot and that's just 1 so this is just m y dot let's write it down here That is m y dot. Here we have the partial of L with respect to x dot. So there's L. So again, that's just going to be 2m x dot. But the 2 cancels the 1 half, so you have m x dot. So this just gives us m x dot. So let's just look at these two. Here we're saying then that ddt of m x dot equals 0. So we're saying that this derivative is 0. Well this is constant. That means then that x dot must be a constant. And this is going to give us the same thing, because now we're going to have d dt, let's just write this in here, my dot, you have m y dot equals 0. So again, this is going to imply that y dot is a constant. So s dot is a constant, and y dot is a constant. So we're saying that for the projectile, we're saying that Vx and Vy, those components of the velocity, are constant. And of course, that's exactly what we would get if we had considered the motion of the particle um, uh, from the Newtonian point of view. However, we still have these equations. So, so far we have that vx and vy are constants. Now, let's look at this. The partial of L with respect to z dot. Again, that's just going to be m z dot. So we have d dt m z dot minus. Now we have to take the partial of L with respect to z. So here's L and we want the partial of L with respect to z. Now this is L. The partial of that with respect to z it's just going to be minus mg. So this is minus mg, which means this is going to come up being a plus negative, minus, minus mg equals zero, so we have plus d d t. The mass here is constant, so we have m z dot dot, that's the acceleration in the z direction, plus m g equals zero, where we have the acceleration in the z direction 
equals minus g. Which of course is what we would have obtained if we had started off with f equals ma and just followed through using um, Newtonian mechanics. So again, um, and of course vx and vy were both constants. So that's it for the for this video. Again, we just wanted to give a a simple demonstration of once you obtain the Lagrangian, what's the general form of it? So from here, then we can deduce the uh, uh, Lagrangian Euler equations that would result from this. Then we solve those and that determines the, uh, the motion of the system. Um, in the other videos we'll have more complicated examples and then we'll contrast using Newtonian mechanics with Lagrangian mechanics and demonstrate that many of times the Lagrangian method is easier to use and can save us a lot of work. So come and join us for those videos and we'll try and solve some more complicated problems.